Good morning. Uh, we are lost for words, as one would say. Let us start the review of the week. And as we know, prices are nowhere near where they used to be last week. This is the two-year note, which is now in our bullish sector, but still within the range of the previous highs. Let's put in a line here as well. As you can see, it spiked the previous highs, but could not sustain it and came back quite a long way. Although it still looks like it will be drifting higher. The five year note, exactly same story. This is a daily chart. It spiked the previous high, came right back within the range of the Bollingers, but it looks like over the next few days and weeks it will be doing a higher zigzag, basically making a higher wedge, which shows you that two and five year notes should be heading down in yield. Ten year notes actually is a little bit more bearish, we think. Uh, it's done nothing wrong yet and it has plenty of space to go higher, but we just don't like the fact that it could not sustain these levels up here above 133. The 30 year bond is the one that we're beginning to like the least because it looks like it's done most of its move. Again, it couldn't sustain the highs around the 171 area, but again, it is not immediately bearish we think it will be making a wedge over the next few days. And we will show you later on why we think this is important. We expected the market to actually sustain, sustain the new highs. We told you last week, in event of Brexit, buy bonds. We were right, but we were only half right. We did not expect the, the market to come back at all, which gives us different scenarios that we will now explore with you. Let's look at the chats. It did nothing on Brexit but go lower and come back within the Bollinger Bands. As you can see on a daily chart, they sold the open and sold it all day. Bobble, same story. They sold the open and sold it all day. And finally, Bunds they sold the open and sold it all day. Now, what does that mean in the longer term? That means that the spread between Europe and US is coming in slightly. So the European markets would start yielding more and the US markets will be relatively stable, which has vast implications for something that everybody is wrongly positioned in, and that is the euro against the dollar. Now, our thesis has been that a risk off move would involve a 
much higher dollar and therefore lower euro a euro dollar it looks like we're going to be wrong on that and I think the market is very badly positioned which will cause two-way volatility over the next several weeks uh, and possibly up to two months the market has been very good at coming back after such a uh, fantastic uh, news event coming back within the previous Bollinger Bands. We would not have expected that. The market closed within the daily Bollinger Bands. That to us is amazing. Uh, we expected the market to close right at its lows if it was going to continue to perform a trend sequence. Let us look for confirmation or denial of our thesis from other markets. Let's have a look at sterling, which of course is the greatest mover, as one would have expected. Again, it has closed not too far away from the lower Bollinger Bands and more importantly as we suspected it has not broken this low the this low which is now uh, let's have a look 134.75 on a closing basis now becomes very important we anticipate that the market will now do a very volatile wedge, i.e. rallying towards the 140-142 area and breaking also the 132 lows. And doing that in the reverse order that the market is positioned, i.e. when the market gets positioned short of cable, it'll rally like a bitch and take out 140 and stop everybody out at 142 and just when everybody is stopped it'll fall back towards 132 everybody will start getting short again towards the lows it might make a marginal low and go straight back up so again this shows us a weekly wedge developing let's have a look at the yen well the yen also amazingly has closed right within the Bollinger Bands it spiked them but it closed right at the Bollinger Band again um, we would not have expected that when you get a trend sequence you always get closes well below the Bollinger Bands and retracements up to the Bollinger Bands and then it keeps going um, this is far less bearish uh, on this chart than we expected i.e. the risk off trade is far more uh, contained than we would have expected on the Brexit news whatever anybody might tell you so that is the yen euro yen again it spiked but came right back it is still within a let's put in these it is still within this channel that is to us quite amazing uh, this Brexit was a historic event and we expected the reaction to be historic it is not it is a surprise to the market 
but no more than a small surprise. We now expect this, which is another indicator of risk off, to do exactly the same as all the other charts, i.e. through time, bore people out of their minds and stop them at every turn. And that finally leads us to the equity markets. Well, the equity markets got hit hard. Of course they did. And they are slightly through the Bollinger Band, but they're still within the channel in which they've been for the best part of three months. We are amazed. Um, we now think that the equity markets, just like the FX markets and the bond markets, will produce a wedge, i.e. a volatile market within a tightish range, which is precisely the opposite of what everyone else is expecting. We are now expecting drops below 2000 and then rallies back up to 2150, 2160, 21, uh, 2060, uh, 2070 to stop everybody out and then moves back down. And we expect that kind of wedge action to develop over the next several weeks. The most bearish market is the uh, is the Nasdaq, which is probably the one that will rally least and drop the most. So once again, we think that we will be shorting Nasdaq on spikes and buying S&Ps on drops. Probably the safest trade to do is, a, is to sell puts struck around between 1960 and 1925, which is the area where we might be going in a wedge over the next few weeks and against it on a delta basis or maybe slightly less than a delta basis sell the Nasdaq. We shall be deciding that over the course of the next few days. If we have a look at now the DAX and the stocks, those are actually again very interesting. The DAX had a relatively good day it rallied from the open and closed within the daily Bollinger Bands. And as you can see, dropped very ever so slightly in our buy box. Well, we suspect that it'll be doing the same as the, uh, as the uh, ES, the, um, the S&P. It'll be now having two 300 point rallies on the back of nothing and three, four, 500 point drops after the, after the rally. Entirely opposite to what positioning is in the market. On a weekly basis, it's actually closed well within the neutral range of the weekly Bollinger Bands, which we find utterly amazing. So yet another conclusion that the risk off move is nowhere near as strong as people are talking about. Uh, don't look at people's tweets and panics and stuff like that. Look at what the price action is actually doing in a longer term context. This is still a three wave drop from all time highs. We find that amazing. Um, if we cannot over the course of the next four to six weeks 
make a lower low below this level 6,700 uh, sorry 8,700 we will have baked in a three wave decline from the all time highs which eventually will be very bullish the market that got hit the hardest of course was Nasdaq I mean sorry stocks because stocks is actually a European um, periphery contained index which fell much more than the DAX and should continue to underperform the DAX so maybe the safest trade out there is on spikes to sell the uh, stocks and on dips to buy the DAX against it so you're long DAX short stocks but even that the weakest of all European indices baskets of indices closed within its weekly Bollinger Bands um, pretty amazing considering that the uh, Italian market and the Spanish markets fell by 10 to 12 percent again something which is telling you yes there is some risk off but it's not 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 as pronounced as people are thinking and talking about do not short drops short rallies there will be rallies in this market so those are the equity markets and another beautiful chart sorry that I'm jumping about so much is actually sterling Swiss sterling Swiss made a marginal new low but rallied to close within a whisker of its Bollinger Bands this is the low which happened after the Swiss National Bank depegged from the euro and look what happened after this drop a it closed right at its lows for the week it didn't close right at the lows it closed a long way from the lows what did the market do that for the next one two three four five six seven weeks which is two months it wedged lower this is exactly what we are expecting a wedge lower i.e. a trade between 135 and 130 maybe margin new lows 128 127 and then it started rallying and that is the big danger of a wedge dollar index just to take it back look at that move on the five hours basically from 93 all the way to near 97 and then a move back to the 50% retracement at 95 again a market which is telling you I am going up but don't buy me when I'm at the Bollinger Bands buy me when everybody is being stopped out and I will wedge slowly slowly towards the 97 98 area gold we think is the same chart it's telling us although it's closed marginally above the highs that it's a very dangerous market to just position long and stay long if you put your stops below the you know 113 15 area or 113 18 area you will be stopped there is absolutely no two ways about it look at the weekly Bollinger it's closed within a whisker of the weekly Bollinger bands and after having touched this long-term trend line it could now easily keep on 
touching this trend line for the next several weeks and stopping everybody out. It is a market that is telling us again do not position long and go away. It's just not going to happen. I mean look at it. It's closed within the daily Bollinger Bands for Christ's sake. That is not a market which is telling us I'm gonna go up and goodbye. It's you know you better buy me now or you will never be able to buy me again. This is a market which is telling us yes people will keep on buying it towards 1350 but they'll also keep on getting stopped towards the 1300 area. We expect this kind of wedging action to develop here. Silver exactly the same. It had a fantastic opportunity to close it at the highs. It gave it all up and came back to where it was below where it was trading about 10 days ago. Well, if you told me that that would happen after Brexit, I would tell you that that's unlikely. I would give it a very low probability. But it's happened. It's there in black and white, 1778 while the high before that was 1787. The high before that was 1805. So this is a market again which is telling you because all these moving averages give it support that it's going to be a market that's wedging and taking stops above and below. You get the pattern. I can't find a single market here which is telling me I am outright bullish or bearish, position yourself and go away. All I'm saying are markets which are telling me be very careful, don't buy me when I'm rallying and don't sell me when I am dropping out of bed. I'm finding markets which are all telling me fade the move, fade the extremes. Now let's have a look at something which I tried to give me greater clarity about what's going on. This is a chart of gold in sterling. Definitely a five-way drop and so far a three-wave up. Now can that market go, it closed around the 960 area. Can that market go to 1,050? Yes. 1,100? Yes. But it will still be a three-wave move up. So what this chart is telling me, yes, gold is going potentially marginally higher and yes, sterling could be going potentially marginally lower. But you are looking for a 5% move. You're not looking for a 20% move. If now I go for a euro chart, it's more or less telling me the same, but in a less volatile manner than sterling. And if I now look at a yen chart, it's actually telling me that the market is going nowhere. Now this is a very, very interesting chart. It's a chart which is telling us that from Abenomics onwards, nothing has happened. And that gold has actually been the perfect hedge for the Japanese. Why, if we are beginning to think that the yen is coming towards the end of its move, and surely it is very close to it. Why would we expect gold to keep on rising, i.e. that this chart would keep on going that way? It has been since 2012, that's four years, it's been in a very tight range, getting even tighter and tighter. Uh, this to us is confirmation of our reading of the market that we are for a period of volatile trading 
with no trend, which is the opposite of what the market is anticipating. The market is anticipating now a violent trend in sterling, in equities, and other in FX in general, in uh, in DX. I mean, we've spoken to a bunch of people who are expecting a very violent move. I mean, let's have a look at the uh, at the weeklies. This is, as everybody reads it, basically wave four of the trend up and that the market will break higher and trade well above the figure at some stage in above 100 in the in the DX for wave five yeah might might well happen but this inability to even go to the top of the weekly Bollinger Bands tells us that this market is not ready to make that move that the risk off is much much less than people anticipated and that we ourselves anticipated. If that is the case, it is reasonable to think that the ES will drop far less than people anticipate. Well, look at this chart. It came back to the 0 0.382 retracement and it's rejected it it has a upward sloping 200 day moving average it is now reasonable to expect it to do this i.e. trade between 2050, 2060, 2070 and 1950, 1925 it is not reasonable given the background of all the other charts to expect it to drop out of bed and keep on going. So in conclusion, yet another inconclusive chart that tells us very high volatility moves within a potentially quite tight 50 to 75 point range. And as we always do when we are uncertain about what the charts are telling us and it makes no fundamental sense we go back to fundamental indicators this is what has happened last week and we told you that we didn't think that the 16 line would catch the market because every time there's been a shock it's always going, gone down to the 15 line. What we are telling you this week is that we're no longer so sure. The 16 line comes in around the 2020 area I'd guess and the market we think could easily break it and trade in a whipsaw much like this area here tap 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 that will be longer term bullish if the market now cannot even get to the 15 line and keeps on bouncing off it that to us will be an indicator that the market is ready to take out the highs i know it makes no sense at all, but we are telling you that the charts are not bearish, uh, even though are longer term bearish. They are probably short term bearish, but not in a trend kind of manner, but a trading kind of manner. I mean, just the worst of all possible markets. Uh, it will rally 30, 40 points and stop you out of all your shorts and then it'll drop like a stone and not let you back in that kind of a market uh, a completely um, 
fade the move if you dare kind of market that we are not traditionally very good at trading but there you go we're not day traders we like to position and unfortunately that is what the market is telling us um, we looked at the 10-year yields as well to see if the yield charts gave, a, gave us more clarity than the futures charts. Uh, this is the 10-year note, a weekly chart. Well, what can you say? You can say it's closed again below this previous low, so it is overall still bullish. But having rejected the 140-138 area, it is again telling us that it's a market we could easily move back to 175 and could easily move back down towards 140. A whippy market between 175 and 140. Exactly what the futures markets were telling you and this is confirmation five year which unfortunately is not as good it's giving you a lower moving average but it's giving you also a very whippy move a very 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 whippy move we would rather be in the shorter end of the US curve because we fear that we might start getting some steepening which is exactly the opposite of what people expect people expect more flattening as people buy the uh, US market um, and move out of Europe and into US we are afraid we're gonna get the opposite so we would much rather be in the five-year area but again trade it and this is the Bund you can look at it since they opened since the open it did nothing but go up in yield and actually closed slightly higher than the previous low now whether this market does this for the next few days and weeks sorry because this is a weekly chart it could no sorry that's a daily chart this is a weekly chart it could easily do this for several several weeks a completely indecisive market within the range of the last week so what are we telling you in the end we are telling you that the market is far less risk off than we thought it would be we are telling you not to sell violent drops i.e. do not follow the trend do not follow this yeah it could easily stop again at 1997 and spit everybody back out around 2040 2050 2060 and then go to 1980 1975 which is a trading market it's a very volatile trading market which will stop longs and shorts but at the end of the day it's going single digit percentage points anywhere it's confirmed by all the charts we're looking at by the dollar index by gold by silver by the even by the ones you would expect to give you the biggest indications euro swiss Euro-Swiss, I expected it to fall apart. I expected a close way through the Bollinger Bands, just like here. I mean, look at it. This is an impulsive move. 
this is a I'm stopping everybody out and I am now going to do this Euro yen. Again, this is on a weekly chart. This is an impulsive move. It keeps on closing at the highs every week. This is a spike. We would definitely not, I mean, Euro yen is a great indicator of risk on, risk off, or it should be. We would now not be surprised to see eight to ten weekly bars within the range of this last week's uh, bar which should indicate to you very very whippy conditions but overall no discernible double digit trend a single digit trend yes can we expect Can we expect a touch of this 15 times line? Yeah, okay, uh, I will allow for that possibility. Uh, 1900, 1925. But I would not bet the ranch on it doing it. It is far less risk off than the market expects. The evidence is all there. We We'll, we are willing for the market to prove us wrong, but then we will revise our opinion. And our opinion at the moment is very simple. Over the course of the summer, you will have a range bound, wedgy, whippy type market, which will make new lows and also stop everybody who has sold those new lows. You might make new lows four, five, six times, but it'll also stop you out four, five, six times. It's a trading market which will require very great courage to fade. And the only way you will make money out of it is by fading new lows and fading the rip higher. So, Pick your side. If you're bearish, wait for the rips. There will be rips. And if you're bullish, buy the new lows. And if you're like us, bad day traders, we will be most likely than not selling puts around the 15 times area and under hedging them so basically meaning that we will let theta do our work for us uh, and if the market gets to the times 15 line we'll be quite happy to buy it and the exercise our puts will be quite happy to be long of them uh, long of the market at those levels so be careful it is exactly the opposite of what people have been telling you might be happening, i.e. a trend sequence. I know that people are now very bullish gold, uh, they're very bullish DX, they're very bearish equities. Uh, we don't think any of that is going to come to pass. Or rather, we think that everybody's going to be right and everybody's going to be stopped while being right. A very, very, very difficult market. A trendless market that you have to trade very carefully so lower leverage and be quick to take profits thank you